I think I have to give it a, a trend and a signal into Shell as well for decision. Should we still carry on to develop engine oils? Uh, if you all drive uh, electric in five years, right? So better we stop now then. So that, that kind of questions, but also looking what will the world look like in terms of mobility in 2050. So, so, so and then I'm really passionate about that one. And now we're looking in ahead and what can be done also in the future. And if you really think about what are the challenges for the future as we see it today already, there are several ones. The first one is accessibility to energy. I mean, do we have enough fuel? I'm thinking now globally, right? And then we can, if you like to concentrate on Europe or whatever, I'm very happy to do so. Do we have enough energy available? Um, how will it be affordable and what will be the, the cost for the energy? So good competition. Uh, and there will be especially two, and therefore I'm saying two, uh, ecological uh, uh, driver. And very often that's misunderstood and, and therefore I'm, I'm very picky on that one. It's always mentioned emission reduction. But emission reduction is not emission reduction because many, many of us, many of uh, um, uh, your networker uh, and, and in the public, there's a misunderstanding that emission is always carbon dioxide reduction. Emission is split in smog-related emissions and in global emissions. And it's a warm engine and you keep it on idling and you park it in front of Amsterdam train station or Paris city or whatever, it's cleaning up the air and smog levels. So the air sucked in to the engine is, in terms of smog emissions, dirtier than that which will end with hellfire. So uh, it's, it's, it, this is fascinating, this is not known in the public. So in that sense, an engine already is cleaning up the air. The question is, what is sort of the acceptable level of local pollution? And uh, to what extent is it then, will the politicians and the society accept a certain kind of level of smog emissions? Or will be the political and societal decision simply zero, no, no emissions, zero, nothing. There's another big challenge, and that's uh, inherently combined with the other, and that is we will be more people. We just uh, jumped over the 7 billion hurdle, very likely, I think, until 2050, if it grows everything like gas, 9 billion. But that's only the one trend. The scary trend is the huge trend of urbanization. So we will have more and more mega cities. And to give you, I mean, I'm fascinated by this one fact and quote. Uh, if it carries on as it is, then for the next decades, we will build another one million city every week. One million city every week. So it's not only about moving from seven to nine billion, it's also this urbanization. Basically, I was sitting next to my wife and she was driving. She says, but we will all be driving like this in 20 years time. And I was like, well, either we're going to be saying, oh, that was fun. We drove an electric car and then it died out. Or something radical will happen in battery technology and we will actually be driving. Now you have thought this over a lot because you're the chief scientist at Shell. Um, give us your insights. What is your view on the state of the electric car today? I think today there's still lots of development done on any kind of car and uh, I think very fair to say that there's no one golden solution. Uh, it will be not the vehicle for the future either the today gasoline or diesel cars we know. I think there will be lots of cars. These cars they will make use and make, will make sense for certain use. So for example the battery electric vehicle would make lots of sense for example in inner city very short commuting, short range, frequent recharging um, and also emission, local emission free device. The thing is I always I it's, it is just hard to get to the bottom of anything because the question is what the bottom actually is. How much do you want to take into account? And in real life terms, if you'd be buying a new car today and you would want to be as environmentally friendly as you could be, then where should you go? What type of car could you... Could you I definitely would go, and in today's technology, definitely would go for a compact, 
not a very large vehicle, uh, but fit for purpose. Do you think there are large leaps ahead for the petrol engine? Yes, I mean, all of us, I mean, there are lots of real technical facts-based calculations only, uh, already, uh, that uh, the internal combustion engine still has realistic chances to improve another 25, if not 30 percent fuel consumption. And if you take that into account, then really also for a battery electric vehicle, it will be challenging and there has to be lots of electricity produced purely renewable. Yeah. So if you would be an extreme uh, ecologist and you really would like to drive very sustainable today, then uh, it would be the only way forward that you would install your own photovoltaic system yeah. on your house, on your garage, produce on your own purely renewable energy yeah. and uh, uh, make an effort really for renewable electric production, then also drive a better electric vehicle. But then, I dare to ask you, I know it's not your main field of expertise, but I always kind of worry as well as what do we do with all those batteries that are used out? Yes, sure. I mean, that has to be because taken into consideration for sure. But also, when you touch that one, I think what we discussed so far is only the energy consumption in use. Yeah. And if you really look sustainable into how the world is developing, then it would be important also to look into the, we call it the cradle to grave from yeah. birth of a yeah. vehicle to scrapping a vehicle. Yeah. And uh, the energy used during uh, operation is only part of the, the name yeah. of the game. So, for example, only to give you some headline figures, and uh, the, uh, there are different quotes and different OEMs around the world, but uh, Renault, for example, uh, just quoted uh, um, in, uh, in public that about production of a car, a conventional car, is about six tons of CO2, 6,000 kilos yeah. of CO2. And if you take sort of briefly uh, a mid-sized car, small car, and you drive it for, let's say, 15, 10, 15,000 kilometers per year, so you will take about two years yeah. in consumption, in fuel consumption, burning fuel, yeah. really to be break even with the energy required simply to produce the car. Yeah. So that means, I mean, the longer the car uh, will be in operation, uh, the smaller the yeah. amount from production uh, will be there. And that's especially now also a discussion which has started also battery electric vehicles, yeah. especially due to the uh, battery uh, Yeah, production short lifespan. Yeah. So, but the trick is, especially if you drive lots of inner city, lots of acceleration, deceleration, then for sure hybridization uh, will be a further improvement in total efficiency of yeah. the uh, combustion engine. Cool. Thanks. Pleasure. <laughs>